JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, security guards run leaving cash inside vehicle. Investigators have revealed that the Berlin security guards, who were held up on Wednesday by gunmen in East Kingston, ran leaving the cash inside the vehicle. The gunmen stole $22 million in the heist on Jackson Road in Rollington Town. It was reported that about midday, the guards stopped to carry to pierce the vehicle, which belongs to Berlin, when another vehicle drove up and two men alighted with guns, the guards told investigators that they ran in different directions. The gunmen took the money and escaped. The four guards were not harmed. Tivoli student in classroom brawl to return to school, says mother. The Tivoli Gardens High School student involved in Monday's classroom brawl with a teacher is being allowed to return to the institution come Monday, his mother confirmed. Deborah Coleman said that she met at the school's Dean of Discipline, Carmen Joseph, this morning, where the decision was communicated. She noted that her son would be allowed to sit his end-of-term examinations. In expressing relief, Coleman said she and her son are pleased with the outcome of the meeting, as her son loves his school. She said that the meeting was indicated that her son will be receiving counseling sessions as of next week. The grade 10 student had been staying home as the school and police continued their investigations into the incident. Coleman is still angered by lingering allegations that her son is a misbehaving student and had been involved in gambling on the sale of drugs on the school's compound. They didn't tell Mr. Not like that, according to Coleman. According to her, while on the school's campus on Friday morning with her son, the female student, or the 16-year-old, said on Wednesday that he bought candy from during lunch hours, had informed her that her son did in fact visit the classroom to purchase sweets. He never did a sell no ganja or gamble. If him did I do that, then you think no one want to take him back, she questioned. After the bust up between the 56-year-old teacher and the male student, which was captured on video, it was subsequently charged with assault. He claimed to have acted in self-defense. Woman rescued from blaze as homes torch in gang war. Lawrence Smith relocated from Guyana 20 years ago and settled in the Williams Lane area of Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Over that time, he watched the community disintegrate into gang conflicts. However, he did everything to keep his wife, four children, and his wife's 72-year-old mother safe from the spiraling violence. But Smith could not escape the clutches of crime early Thursday morning as he lost half of his four-bedroom house and grocery shop to fire. Feuding gangs firebombed the house within proximity of his two-story house and the flames quickly spread, wiping out much of his possessions. Me here they showed fire and me turn idiot. Me no know what to do. The only thing we couldn't do is run out of the house and leave everything, Smith said. My wife's mother was trapped upstairs and we had to use a ladder to climb up and rescue her, he said, adding that she could hardly breathe because of smoke inhalation and has since been hospitalized. With his face a canvas of distress, he disclosed that it would be difficult for himself and his family to recover. Hardly anything was saved. When a burn get water damage, laptops and computers my daughter was in college, Plus our books and other things that have to do with our college work, all gone, Smith lamented. With clothes and furniture and appliance, the things I'm in the shop that take care of my family destroyed. But me give thanks that we're alive, he said. Neighbors theorized that Smith's house was not the intended target of the arsenal attack, but became collateral damage because of its proximity to a three-bedroom board house occupied by a member of a rival faction. It is theorized that residents have become enmeshed in a reprisal that stemmed from the ongoing conflict that started at 31 St. John's Road and spilled over into border in Williams Lane. And while the Williams Lane fire was being extinguished by firefighters, another house at the top of 31 St. John's Road had also been set ablaze. 78-year-old Evadne Forbes, who suffers from heart problems, was alone at home when she saw smoke coming from a back room of her five-bedroom concrete house that morning. Hours after she retired to bed, she was assisted by her daughter, who lived nearby, to fight the fire before the brigade responded. Forbes said that the fire was preceded by a barrage of gunshots fired close to her house. I was doing online service and me hear a whole heap of shot. I me just grab up the phone and the Bible and run inside and took a heart pill because me feel nervous, she said. I don't consider myself safe living here. Me I left the house and take on myself because me can't carry the house, she said. Forbes' losses were confined mainly to her bed and clothing. Superintendent Garnet Dowds of the St. Catherine Fire Department has estimated the Williams Lane fire damage at $15 million and that at 31 St. John's Road at $400,000. We're not able to say what caused both fires because nobody wants to talk how it started, said Dowds. 
referring to the 241 call for 19 Williams Lane. Two units from Spanish Town responded and were able to save 50% of the structure, the superintendent added. He revealed that while they were battling that fire, another call about the St. John's Road fire came in at 3.35 a.m. One unit from the Portmore Fire Station was deployed. Major General Anthony Anderson, Jamaica's police commissioner, is concerned about ongoing gang conflicts that continue to rock the St. Catherine North Police Division. Anderson joined Assistant Commissioner Gary Griffiths and Divisional Commander Superintendent Howard Chambers in Thursday's store of Railway Lane, where they visited the relatives of four men who were murdered in a drive-by Sunday night. The community remains tense. We are seeing a series of reprisals in which mothers, cousins, and friends of gangsters have been killed, and it goes back and forth, Anderson said on Thursday. We have been intercepting them. We are on them. The intel is coming in and the community is supporting our efforts. The police commissioner also visited 31 St. John's Road on Thursday. Approximately 76% of murders are gang-related. Council Troop supports political rival Davison Police and Gangster Summit. Council Michael Troop, People's National Party, Granville Division, has thrown his full support behind a suggestion by Minister of State in the office of the Prime Minister, Homer Davis, for a sit-down between police and gangsters to curtail crime in St. James. According to Troop, compromising may be the answer to the parish's spiraling crime rate. I'm in support of what Omar Davis is saying because sometimes you have to compromise certain things to get certain things. One of the things we're not doing in the parish of St. James and maybe even the wider Jamaica is that we're not using some people who can have much greater influence on the police themselves. Troop argued at Thursday's regular monthly meeting of the St. James Municipal Corporation after being questioned on his reason for supporting Davis's suggestion. I'm just saying that the police need to bring all stakeholders and sit around the table, including the Dons, Troop said after the meeting. Davis, a Jamaica Labour Party politician, who is also a member of parliament for St. James Southern, made the proposal at a function in Montego Bay last Saturday against the background of police statistics showing that between January 1 and June 6 this year, a total of 104 people were murdered in St. James, 26 more than the corresponding period in 2021. I'm really agonizing over how we intercede with the gangs that are really creating havoc in our space. I have a thought process. I think if we can get the combatants, the leaders of these groups, gangs together and put them in a space and say, listen, tell me now where you're fighting for. Tell me what do you want and what do you need? What can we do to appease you? Davis said. On Thursday, Troop said the St. James police should look into Davis's suggestion as not all dons are involved in criminal activities. There are some people who are dons and are not necessarily gunmen, but they have some amount of respect in particular communities. Every council is a don because they control a particular division, and every MP is a don because they control the constituency. So you have people you can talk to who have the influence in the particular spaces, Troop said. I'm in charge of Granville, so I'm influential in Granville. Every community has somebody who is highly influential. So we need to have a summit with community leaders, added the opposition councillor. Troop said that he had been begging for this strategy to be implemented by the police in St. James for over six months. About six months ago, I called on the mayor to arrange a summit with all the stakeholders so we can meet like this, even to meet with the gang leaders. I'm prepared to do that because what is happening in St. James, we can't allow it to continue, even the beer be freed. Something wants to shake up, I don't know what, but it can't continue like this, Troop said. However, Councillor Dwight Crawford, Jamaica Labour Party, Spring Garden Division believes that a strategy involving the educational system should be implemented. I do not have any desire of meeting with any gang leaders. What I'm interested in seeing is we stop the barrel when it is on top of the hill. We are trying to stop it when it is halfway down the hill. So we are faced with a really difficult task. If we had started at the beginning, it would have been easier to control the problems, Crawford said. I would like to see representatives from the Ministry of Education and the schools coming into this room and telling us what their challenges are getting us as representatives involved in dealing with the problems before they graduate to the level that they have graduated to now, the councillor added. The problems that we're dealing with never started this morning. We have been seen on social media where children are carrying knives to school and all kinds of things happening, he said. Two arrested. Several items seized in St. Catherine police operation. Two people arrested and several illegal and uncustomed items seized in a major police operation in Old Arbor, St. Catherine, and its environs on Thursday. The four-hour blitz saw Superintendent of Police, SSP Christopher Phillips, 
and police teams blanketing several communities in the Old Arbor subdivision between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. According to the police, vehicular checkpoint operations were conducted along the gutters and Old Arbor Main Roads and Nareen Lane, which led to the arrest of two individuals, one of which had two outstanding warrants. The other was colored for breaches of the Spirit License and Customs Acts. The police said several illegal and uncustom items were also seized, including half pound of ganja, just over three liters of illegal rum, several packs of uncustom mosquito repelling coils, and one pack of uncustomed cigarettes. Thirteen tickets were issued for breaches of the Road Traffic Act during the operation, the police supported. Meanwhile, officers met with members of the Retired Teachers Association in a community meeting. The group was addressed by SSP Christopher Phillips and Superintendent Upton Nicholson, who is the operations officer for the St. Catherine South Division. SSP Phillips also used the opportunity to encourage residents to continue to make the bold choice and report information about guns, gunmen and gang activities by calling Crime Stopper 311, the Police 119 number, or to visit the nearest police station. Jamaica reports 235 new COVID cases, one death. Jamaica reported 235 new cases of COVID-19 and one fatality on Thursday. According to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, this pushed the total number of cases of the virus since the start of the pandemic to 139,918 and the death toll to 3,080. Of the new reported cases, there were 134 females and 101 males with ages ranging from one day to 91 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 65, St. Catherine 52, St. James 51, St. Anne 13, Westmoreland 13, St. Thomas 11, Portland 10, Hanover 6, St. Mary 6, Clarendon 4, Trelawney 2, Manchester 1, and St. Elizabeth 1. Meanwhile, the latest death is of a 90-year-old woman from St. Thomas. The country also recorded 189 new recoveries, bringing the total number of recoveries to 88,425. The positivity rate for the latest round of testing was 24.2%. There are 141 people hospitalized, four of them are critically ill. There are 2,854 confirmed active cases on the island. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.